Hello, this is Lex Berman, and I'm going to introduce the uh, QGIS 10 system, and I'll just launch it here. QGIS 2.10 is the latest of the freeware QGIS system. When you first open it, you will have to close this tips window, or you can just say, I don't want to see the tips window anymore. And then you'll have the main QGIS screen, which is what I'm going to introduce today. The uh, QGIS interface has several main sections. Have the map window section over on the right. Have the layers list, which generally loads up as a bar on the left, and you can adjust the sizes of these. There's also three other sections. There's uh, the main menu, where you can, as in most software, you can get a series of drop downs that lead to different tools and different functions in the software. There's the toolbar section, which allows you to turn on and off toolbars that appear together either on the top of the screen or along the left side of the screen. You can move those tools around by clicking on the gray dotted area at the edge of the toolbar either to the left of the toolbar or to the top of the toolbar. If I wanted to move this primary manage layers toolbar up to the main top section I could click on it and holding it down drag it up to the top and then let go. Uh, I prefer to keep it in its default position on the left side. And you can turn them on and off by right clicking and then for example if I wanted to turn off the digitizing toolbar you'll see up here the digitizing tools here when I uncheck them they'll disappear. And this is a Python console and uh, project export which are plugins so if I turned off this plugins then I would remove that section of the toolbar. Okay, and then there's a final part which is at the bottom of the screen which is a status bar area. And this is quite useful to just keep an eye on as you're using the system. It will give you uh, coordinates of where your cursor is located at, the scale of the current map view, uh, whether or not to render the, the layers that you have loaded up, and finally the coordinate reference system in its EPSG code number. So we'll get to that later on in the series, but right now this is the main part to your screen. So let's go ahead and load some vector data. I will first off let me introduce this uh, manage layers possibilities over here on the left. And that is also, by the way, uh, visible under view toolbars and then you get the same same view here and I can turn off for example manage layers and that will disappear or I can turn it back on manage layers there it is so this basically is how you add layers of data to your map interface your project and you can add vector layers which is the common GIS format of points lines and polygons you can add raster layers or grids which are gridded information in which each grid cell is exactly the same size and has a value associated with it. You can also connect to many different kinds of databases like Postgres through PostGIS, Spatialite, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, um, Oracle. You could also add data layers that are in standard formats like Oracle Geo Rasters, Web Map Service Layers, Web Map Time Service, WCS, WFS is a web feature server. So finally uh, down here is very useful the Add Delimited Text Layer. If you have a plain text file that has data delimited in, in rows by commas, tabs, or some other delimiter can simply bring it into GIS with this tool and then pick which columns represent the latitude and longitude and it will project it as points onto your map. 
So let's start very simply here by opening a data layer. Here's add vector dialog right here will give you some really useful tools right away, whether you're going to connect to a file, to a folder, to a database, a protocol. And you get to choose the encoding. That will be the character set encoding of the data that you're trying to bring in. And this is extremely useful if you're using other languages such as Arabic, Chinese, this is the Taiwanese Big Five encoding. All the standard Windows code pages for Russian, Arabic, and other languages. Different flavors of different code pages and character sets, the Chinese National, GB23, 12, or GBK, Greek, and so on. And of course your standard uh, European, Latin code pages, as well as UTF uh, encoded Unicode like UTF-8, which is really standard. Your other choice is to just choose system, which will default to whatever the operating system is that you currently have set for your operating system. So I'll just choose system in this case, and I will then go to, sorry, show you that again, to the, I'm going to browse for the source of a file that I want to load. And I'll browse to my desktop where I have some tutorial data loaded up here, part one. And I'll open this continents data. Let me uh, reorient this screen so you can see it. So notice here there's a whole bunch of files listed and continent actually has a series of five files because I have all files set on my data format. So if I was to change this file extension and say I only want to look for Esri shape files, which is what I'm looking for, now you'll see that those are collapsed. And if I want to open continent, it only shows me the continent shape file. But I just wanted you to know that when we talk about a shape file, it's actually a set of files. And if uh, several of the main components are, are missing, if any of the main components are missing, it will not open. So a shapefile is not just this file that ends with SHP, it's actually a set of files. And incidentally, with QGIS you have a choice to open many different kinds of data, from atlas to comma-separated values, to GeoJSON, GRSS, map info files, KML, very versatile set of files that you can open. Let's open this continent shape file. Open. And it will load up in our map window and it will also load on the layers list. So we basically have one layer, continents, which is now shown in the screen. The scale can be seen. We're at 1 to 200 million if I zoom in by uh, choosing my zoom tool. Drag a box and let go. Now I'm at 1 to 11 million. Now I'm at 1 to 1.8 million. I can back up using the zoom back glass tool or I could right click and go zoom to layer which will always bring you back to the full layer extent. So that's your general like opening and navigating a layer. Let's add another layer. Same folder. We'll open the airports. And uh, the airports are now shown on top of the continents layer and you can right click and look at the attributes table which is one of the main functions you want to do for any layer. You can see that there are 9916 objects in this layer with different columns for each row, name column, identifier, ICAO, code, and so on. Now, notice the stacking order of these layers list on the left. If I put the continents on top of the airports, when it renders, it actually draws on top of the airports layer, and I can no longer see them. I'll drag that back underneath, and the airports are now rendering on top of the continents layer. So you can control how the map looks that way. You can also do selection. For example, you can choose this select tool by radius. 
you can just drag a radius and it will select the objects that overlap the radius that you just dragged on. Now what are those objects? If I go to the airports layer and I right click and look at the attribute table, now I will see that there are 17 objects selected out of the total number here. Now at the moment, at the bottom left, you'll see show all features, which is what I'm looking at, but I could say show only the selected features, in which case I'll only see the 17 that have been filtered for the view that I'm in now. So I'm currently just looking at 17 records out of the total, and this is the whole table here. So that's just a really basic summary. You can unselect by choosing this deselect features from all layers. Or if you wanted to select these, you could also unselect by simply clicking on an area where there are no features. Remember, if I was on the continents and I tried to select something, it's only going to select the continents, not the airports. Similarly, if I'm on the airports and I try to select continent, it doesn't select any airports. It doesn't overlap the layer that's active. So this gives you a general idea of how the main interface works in QGIS. I should point out finally the project. Project properties are where you will be able to see the current coordinate reference system, for example WGS84, and you can see its code number EPSG is 4326 and you can enable on-the-fly transformation if you want to add data from another reference system. It will automatically be synced up if it can be identified to the current one that's being used. So that's your project properties. Now let's say I wanted to save this project for future use. I could go to project save as and I can just create a project say um, in the same folder where the data is located which is often useful, and I'll call it my test project, hit save, and now if I close this whole QGIS instance and I go to the folder, I can see there's a test QGIS project. If I click on that, once QGIS opens again, which I suppose it'll take a moment to crank through and do, there it is, then uh, it will open exactly where you left off when you saved it. So this is your general introduction to the new QGIS 2.10 interface map view, layers list, toolbars, menus, status bars, opening layers and doing some selection.